guys, it is Jackie from Pocket of Preschool and I'm so excited you're here with me tonight. So <clears throat> tonight we are talking all about a pet theme in your classroom. So we will be learning, I will be sharing activities about dogs and cats and kittens and bunnies and turtles and all the pets, horses, birds, all, all the pets. Um, so yeah, so what we do is I walk around my classroom and I show you all the fun things that we're doing either this year or I've done years past or maybe a new idea I have. And um, yeah, so I want you in the comments really quickly to why don't you guys tell me um, when you do a pet theme. Do you do a pet theme over the winter? Do you do it in the fall? Have you ever done a pet theme? Um, is it like, I love a pet theme. A pet theme is like one of my favorite themes. I usually try and stick it in January or February because um, you can add so much movement um, and do a lot of movement activities with pets because you know, pets move. <laughs> um, and in the winter when it's cold and you're stuck inside all that, stuck inside all the time, so yeah. So some people say they're doing pets now. Some people say they do it over the summer. So yeah, so keep 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 those comments coming. Tell me um, when you guys do pets. So over real quick in the top of this post, I want to tell you about all the links. There's a link to my TBT store if you need to grab anything. There's a link to my blog, which that has a freebie on it. Um, actually, like two, I think, pet freebies. Um, and then there's also a link to my Amazon storefront if you need to grab any of the things I'm talking about from Amazon. Or um, if you want to sign up for my newsletter, that is at the top of this post too. Um, so if you need any of those things, go ahead and hop it up to the top. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk around, show you all the goodness, and let's get started. Okay, so in the sensory table, and y'all might think I'm crazy, these are literally whole bunches. Like, doesn't that look like so much fun? Um, so how I got these is, is when I go to Office Max, I just say, hey, can I have your hole punches? Or if you're in a school, just put a, um, a box next to the copier. It says put hole punches in here um, and use them for sensory play. And, or um, you can have your kiddos hole punch. That's how I have the colored ones. So I'll have the kiddos do hole punches um, just for morning table time. And then they pop them all in here and they love it. Um, but why we have hole punches in here is because it's kind of like a pet bedding. I have these little hamster counters. These are um, actually math counters. It's kind of out of focus. There we go. These are um, pet counters. And I think they're my all time favorite counter because we use them for so many themes. Um, but there's little hamsters. And I also put little bunnies in here. Like these would be perfect for spring to the little bunnies. Um, so you can kind of see them poking their heads out. And then I just have some tweezers, which these are just from Walmart or Amazon. And I have tubes so they can pretend if they want to act things out and um, do some pretend play, they can crawl through the tubes. And then I have these um, Parmesan con cheese containers. They're just those clear Parmesan containers. And I don't know why, but the kiddos love these things. I think because the tops, they like pop on and off. They can shake them out. They can fill it up. And the whole bunch is really like packed really well. So they can like smash all the hole punches in here too, which is awesome. So if you have never tried hole punches in your sensory table, you totally should. And if you don't want to do hole punches, um, there is pet bedding you can buy at like Walmart that would be fun in here. You could do instead. And it's just like an, like just clean pet bedding would be really fun in here. So yeah, so that's a fun, oh, and then I just have some little scoops. These are like formula scoops or like little like um, scoops from like, you know, like a protein shake or something. Um, so yeah, so if you have any moms who um, have formula, definitely ask them to save their scoops for you because look how perfect that is. Oh, and my scoops them up. Of course it won't scoop now. But look at all that great um, fine motor when they're using these tiny scoops. So yeah, or um, I guess I had a mini eraser in here so you can also throw mini erasers in here and do like a hide and seek. Mm -hmm. So that is a fun idea for the sensory table. Mm, sorry, my nose. I'm gonna show you some, um, what I'm sent home. So in my pet math and literacy pack, there is a um, family home connection piece. So it's basically you have a class pet. So last year, and we it's actually sent home with the kiddo. This is the journal from last year. So I just have a, um, a dog stuffed animal. You can do any kind of stuffed animal you want. Um, you can have your class vote on it. And every night, one kiddo takes it home and they draw and write about what their adventures were. They can put pictures in them if they want. Um, they can just draw and write. 
Um, it's totally up to them, and it comes with a note, and then it just says, my night with our class pet. And this is one from a couple years ago. Um, but yeah, so they just draw at their level, and they talk about the next day. Um, they come in and to share at Circle what they did with their pet. And it's really fun. The parents love it. The kids love it. The dog goes to karate. The dog has to sometimes get a bath in the washing machine. Um, but it's awesome. And it's a really great homeschool connection piece. So definitely try doing a class that where they take home and bring it back to, um, to school. It's really fun. Um, well, pets have wants and needs. So for a writing assessment, um, we actually did this today for small group. Um, we, I let them pick a pet. They, if they could pick any pet they wanted, they had to pick one. And then they had to write a shopping list, like if they were going to the pet store. So they're really learning about needs and wants, um, and what animals need. So, <coughs> excuse me. Um, and somebody asked, do I ever not get these pets back? And I do sometimes, some kiddos will take a couple days, but it's fine. Um, and sometimes it takes me a couple months to get through if I have like a big class. Because I would do it with when I had 18 kiddos. And it would take a month or two. You know, a while. So, um, especially if kids didn't bring it back in time. But it was no big deal. Um, but yeah, so they wrote a shopping list. And like here's his turtle. And he needed apples and lettuce. And here's his turtle. And he needed a bowl and a cage. Um, so this is a pre-K friend. This is a um, four-year-old. And then here is a three-year-old. So everybody did it. So he had his dog, and he said his dog needed bowl and a food and his leash. So they all did it, and they all did it at their own level. But it was a great way to talk about needs and wants, and it's a great um, writing assessment. You can just throw in their portfolio or use at conferences. <coughs> so another fun thing um, that's in my math and literacy pack are these just pet litter puzzles. And the letters have nothing to do with the pet. It's more of a, um, like a check, um, check your answer type thing. Um, but if you wanted to make this harder, because I know at this point in the year, a lot of our kiddos are working on sounds, just grab some like sound magnets. Let me see what these are, hold on. So these I got off um, my teacher store, but I linked them on Amazon. They're just object magnets. So they could, once they put all the puzzles together, if you have kiddos who are ready to do sounds, so they would go like tiger, tiger and they would they could put it on the t puzzle so you could also kind of extend it and um put it out um some sound magnets or like object cards or whatever you have and then i also have these sight word race and letter race so what you would do is put a counter on each one of these and they the kiddos would pick a card and i um color code my cards so that way if they get mixed up they're easy to tell them apart um, so they pick a card and it's a team game. So they're all working to get all the pets in their home. And then they could say the letter name or say the sight word and just keep on going. And then these are just beginning sound cards. So they rock and they would put a magnet letter there or they could write it with a dry erase. And all of these printables are in my pets, math, and literacy pack. Awesome. Okay, another idea I have if you um, want to do some fine motor work. Here's just a journal, and I did this one, guys, like this. My kiddos didn't do this. We've only had one day on our pet theme, so we haven't really done much yet. Um, but I just took these little stickers, um, the little, like, circle stickers, and you can make up a story. So you can say, so you could, before, um, before you guys started, you would put all your, all your stickers in everybody's journal, and then you would say, oh, the dog hopped over puddles. Let's make some hopping lines, and you could go, like, bump, 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 and oh my goodness, the dog ran um, across the yard really fast and go whoosh in a straight line. So you could make up a story using the different kinds of lines and they would have a starting point, which is why you have the sticker over there. So it's a really fun, easy, fine motor game. And if you don't have these stickers, you could definitely just draw a little pause um, on the corner of everybody's journal. So a fun little idea. Um, and it's a great listening activity as well. Now, I know some of you guys are going to think I'm crazy um, for this activity, but um, your kiddos can do research. And even if they are scribbling on this whole thing, if they're three, that's okay. Um, but it's just getting them um, used to and letting them know that books are so amazing and they have all this information in them. And are they going to be reading these words? Absolutely not. But they can read the pictures and 
tell that these kittens um, like to play with yarn because they look happy. Um, this kitten likes to play outside. Maybe wasn't the best book to pick out. <laughs> um, but so grab any like nonfiction book you have. Maybe not this exact one, but here's the picture. So they could be like, oh, you know, I can tell that kittens, they need love and attention or they need to be petted. And then they can draw that on their pet research page. And it could be super, super basic. It could literally be a picture of a, a cat. It could be little circle food. It needs like water and food. Um, and then it's home. You could just draw the cage or the pet bed. Um, so it could be super simple, but it just gets kids excited about doing research. And when you tell them they are doing research, they feel so, so proud and they are so excited. And you, if you want to make it even more exciting, put these on a clipboard and man, clipboards are like amazing for little kiddos. I swear. They're like, my kiddos, when I give them a clipboard, they feel like they are powerful and so smart. Um, so yeah, so another, so I'm, I'm in the, my art center. Sorry guys. So as you can see, I have no art up yet because we didn't have school on Monday. So we don't have, I don't have any actual projects to show you, but I'm going to show you guys a whole bunch of ideas. So you can do still life. So just grab some of your animal figures and have them draw the um, animal figures. And if they're, if they're little figures there for support, they can look at it, they can touch it, they can feel the shape. Um, and just put the animals on the table that they are interested in and then they can draw draw the animal. If um, your kiddos need some cutting practice, try doing a cutting collage. Um, if you need magazines, I usually go to my local library and buy the old ones. Um, you can tell like this one's 2007. Um, but, and then I just rip out pages and then they can cut them out. If you have itty bitty guys, so what you would wanna do would be to help them because it's going to be really hard for them to visually cut around that dog. So just, okay, so use a permanent marker, not a washable, but just draw a circle around the object and they can cut out that circle instead of like around the actual image because that is really visually hard for a three-year-old, but they can definitely cut around the circle. Just use a permanent marker because the paper is slick and that would be a fun um, fine motor activity. Um, a fun open-ended art activity, which we are actually doing this um, and putting this out on Friday, is we're gonna do feather painting. So this is just a tray from the dollar store and these are just some feathers and I'll just squirt some paint in there and then they can paint with the feathers because birds have feathers. Um, and They can touch and they can feel the feathers and they can make designs or just, you know, do fun open-ended art. And then we all love paper plate projects. So you can have them paint a snake and then um, afterwards they can, um, you can draw the shape on the back or you can cut it out, it's up to you. Um, and then you can hang them from your ceiling, but they're super cute. Or I guess if you would hang them from your ceiling, you'd probably have to do it the other way so they would be going down. But yeah, <laughs> you guys know what I mean. But yeah, so they can sponge paint, they can finger paint. This is a plate that they just painted the whole thing. Um, so this would be like a really great project for like three-year-olds or toddlers. They can just finger paint the fish and then you cut out the mouth and then attach it for the tail. And these would be so cute on the, on the, um, on the wall. How cute is that? And if you wanna take it one step further, you could use bubble wrap and they could stamp it and then it could look like scales. Um, two. <coughs> you can also make pattern snakes. So if you want to sneak in some math, and we love bingo dabbers in my classroom. This is this principle is actually in my math and pet math and literacy centers pack. But they can dot the pattern all the way around. Um, so sneak in some math, and then they can cut on the line. So now you got art, fine motor, and math. You can also do pet puppets. So these are just some little pet bags, some paper bags. And then um, these are those like eyeball stickers. I love those things. Um, and then you can just put out like, I usually just put out a tray like this and like, you can put like feathers in it, um, like a circle paper punch. Um, and then I usually put some beaks out, like um, little noses or mouths. Um, you can also put pom-poms out um, in your tray. Just basically grab some stuff from the dollar store and they can make little pet puppets. And then they can use those if you're doing like, um, you could like make up a story like, you know, like five, five little birdies sitting 
on a fence or something. You know, one of those little silly poems you make up just for fun. You can also do the oil pastel and the watercolor for fish because you can make an aquarium. And you can also talk about like what does an aquarium need? So it needs like gravel at the bottom, a plant, a rock, you know, things like that. Um, and if you want, um, <coughs> right now, like you can go to the party store or maybe the dollar store has these on. These are those big, um, what are they called? Like, they're just like, I don't know, they just like hang them on the wall. Like, I guess like just like decorations. But I just grabbed some fish ones. So that way when they're drawing their fish, they are noticing all the patterns in nature. Like Nemo or the clownfish has, you know, like orange, white, orange, white, orange, white. And then this one has a pattern. Um, and you can just talk about the different patterns you see in nature on fish. And it's just a really big, um, big, and you can, big, just like picture. And you can also use these as a stencil. So they can put this fish on a white piece of paper and then they can trace around it and then cut it out and then make their own little fish. So again, I, these are usually like at the party, like a party city type store or um, uh, the dollar store has them sometimes. Samantha is asking if I have anything for polar animals. So Samantha, I do. I did a whole Facebook Live on it and I have um, a thing on my blog and in my TBT store. So either search there or I'll pop you some links after we're done. Um, at the easel, I just have, now I don't have paints out yet because I just opened up my pet store. So I usually, um, I'll tell you about that in a minute. Let me tell you the activity and I'll flip it around. But I just have these, I want to say these are like bulletin board, like animals, like a bulletin board set. Um, but I just put them at the easel and that way if they're like painting their pet, they can just clip it on. And then they put their paper right here and then they have a visual of what the animal looks like. So, because some kiddos, it's really hard for them to visualize like what a lizard looks like because they may not have had many experiences with a lizard yet. So they can look at a lizard and you can do Google images for these. Um, you don't have to have anything fancy. You can use old calendar pictures. Um, yeah, and I know some of you guys are gonna ask about my little border. So you know our friends are short. These easels are from Ikea. And there's no way my three-year-old are going to be able to reach the top of this. So this is literally a piece of border that I just taped to it. Oh, can you see it? Yeah, there we go. Sorry. So I just taped it to it. And then now my little baby three-year-old and some of my short five-year-olds can clip this on and do the easel independently. And then I do have this visual easel routine. This is free in my TBT store if you want to grab it. But that way um, they can paint at the easel um, independently. At this point in the year, I don't really help with the easel. Like they they get a smock, they get their paper, they write their name, they make it and they put it on the drying rack because my drying rack is right over there. And then um, they've been asking for colored paper. So right now we have colored um, easel paper out. So yeah, and then Samantha, it is on TBT. And there's on the blog, so I'll link it um, after we're done. So, my kiddos love Play-Doh trays. So this is kind of like a little pet bakery Play-Doh tray. So they have the little pet bones, because we all know there are real pet bakeries now, like it's a real thing. So I just have some of these silicone cupcake molds and I can't find these at Walmart anymore. I wanna say I got these on Amazon and they're linked in my Amazon shop. And then I just have um, some cut up pipe cleaners. You guys, seriously, nothing fancy, but they love putting these on for sprinkles. And then I just have some pony beads, and then, which is great fine motor for when they're putting them in. And then I have some small, medium, and large dog bones. And then I have been cheating so badly this year. I have just been buying Play-Doh. Like I haven't really made much this year. I've been so totally, totally cheating because it's so cheap on Amazon. I just can't, I can't help it. So yeah, and then my watercolors are over there because we did a lot of watercolor um, for our polar animal theme and they like to do watercolors independently. I'll just show you the setup. So it's just my watercolors, oil pastels, and then the brushes so they can bring this to the table and then they can create if they want. When I put the pets by the art easel, it's because, like some of these kiddos are three, four, five, in, or in kindergarten, 
maybe none of their friends have a pet turtle. Maybe they've never actually got to touch a turtle. Maybe they've never seen a mouse besides like, you know, when, like if there was one in your house and you scream. Um, so that's why I have the pictures of the easel. So that way they can see it and then they can look at the shapes and then they can create their picture at the easel. So it's like a visual, visual model for them. That's what I was gonna say. All right, I'm gonna flip it around and show you some more. So this is my library center, if you can see it. I actually kept our mailboxes up from the post office, so I just kind of stuck them over here because they're loving those. Um, and then I have this, it's like a letter sort game, and I just have it on a tray, that way they can take it and just put it on the ground. And it's just different little ways to sort the letters. So they're putting the little dogs in the houses. So this one is like an uppercase and a lowercase sort. And then I have straight, both types of lines, and then curvy lines. In my name, not in my name. Holes, no holes. So that way they can sort the letters all the different ways and really notice all the different ways that letters are made. And then they're just little puppies. They can put them in their houses. And we talked about writing trays last week. So this is a fun writing tray. And it is in my library center because they're doing writing. Um, but this time I put these number cards. And these are actually in one, for, from a math game in my pet center. So they... Um, look at the card, and they can make the number. And then this is bird seed, you guys. Look at this. Oh, and if you have a peanut allergy, be really careful of bird seed. You can also just use like cornmeal, um, or um, yeah, cornmeal in your tray. So they make the number, and then they can. These are those pet counters again. So then they can count out that many birds. So they're counting. They're they're recognizing a number, they're counting, and they're working on their letter formation all at once. Um, this is a rhyme time game. This is just a simple pocket chart. And sometimes I know you guys say your um, kiddos don't play a lot with the printables. Sometimes if you put them on a vertical surface, they're more likely to play with them. Um, and again, that, that rhyme time is in my math and literacy centers pack. And then we have the writing table, which I have the uppercase and the lowercase. I have some of these little stickers again, because a lot of times if we do something in our journals, they will come to the library center and do it independently. So I put some of those in here as well. So that's the fun writing table. Let me show you some books, because you know you guys know I love books. Um, Hooray for Fish is an amazing book. There's also Hooray for Birds. Um, but this is like seriously one of my favorite, most favorite books of all time. I, I, I think I tell you guys about this book all the time. I can't even open it. Um, but the pictures are gorgeous, um, and it just talks about different kinds of fish, and it, hello, Ellie fish, hello, Shelly fish, hairy fish, scary fish. Um, there's lots of patterns. There's lots of great vocabulary in here. Sorry, turning it. I fish, shy, shy fish, fly fish, sky fish. It's hard to read when you're looking through your phone. Sorry, guys. Um, but yeah, so lots of great vocabulary. It's rhyming. The illustrations are beautiful. There's patterns, just all kinds of amazing things. So it's Hooray for Fish by Lucy Cousins. And then, and then there's also, um, she also has Hooray for Birds. And then I love Pop Pop Fish. And I didn't want to buy the character cards. And if you guys know me, you know my trick. I literally take the pages from the book and I color copy it and I just put it back on some cardstock. Um, so yeah, so you can talk about his different his different faces. So you can talk a lot about feelings and how he was feeling at different points in the book. Or you can do a sequence scene and do the characters. So again, I literally color copied these right out of here. It's a super great trick um, to make cheap um, cards for your um Cheap story cards for your for your library center. <coughs> and then I also want to remind you, don't forget to put nonfiction books out as well as fiction books. Um, so make sure you have kind of an equal, you know, you have nonfiction and you have fiction books in your library center. Oh, and then Not Norman. I love that book, Not Norman. It's about a little guy who goes to the pet store and he really doesn't want to fish, but in the end, turns out he loves his fish more than he would a dog. So if you're getting a pet fish, Not Norman is a super cute story um, to read. Oh, and, and Bark George, and then Mama Cat has three kittens. Oh, there's so many good pet books, you guys. So, so many. 
So Kelly says, can you do that at Office Depot? Okay, I have before. I don't know if I was supposed to or not, but I did. <laughs> I'm very sneaky. Um, so yeah, so I have before, but now I just use mine at home because um, my copier works for, like that. So I'm, I'm going to try and go a little bit fast that way in case my phone dies. <sighs> my charger must not be working. So, if you have chains, these are a great manipulative for a pet theme because you can measure with them and they're just like a leash. So grab some of your pets. And like these, I got from the dollar store. I wanna say there's like some snake packs and stuff at the dollar store. So grab your chains and just grab your pets and you can measure them. These are some more of those pet counters I was talking about. I love them. They're on Amazon. And then dog bones. Dog bones are a great counter. These are the itty bitty like, these are the mini dog bones. Oh my gosh, they love, you can measure with these. You can weigh them on the scale. You can get different size dog bones and compare, which are really, really fun. Um, roll, count, and build is a fun game. So you roll the dice, which I don't have over here, and then you um, identify the number, and then you put that many cubes up and build it, and then when the when the cubes are built, so this one would have five, this one would have two, so you can compare quantities and they can visually compare. And I know you guys are always asking how I differentiate um, for small group and whole group or for all doing like a table time morning activity. So my, my pre-K kiddos would use two dice and play this one, and my three, four-year-olds would use one dice and play this one. Now, pets are also great for sorting. I do have this amazing sorting activity in my Math and Literacy Center's pack comes with all these great boards. However, if you don't have this, you can use the pet counters. You can use your real pets from their block center and you can just sort them. You don't have to have a fancy board. You can just sort them between like large, or well, actually, sorry. So like this one would be large and this one would be like a medium and small. And then don't forget about other ways to sort. So like spots and stripes, tails, no tails. So make sure you guys just aren't sorting by color, shape, and size. Try and um, do some higher level and do like things that like don't belong because that's actually higher level thinking. So this is a goldfish crack. So you would use goldfish crackers for this. Um, and you could either, if you have the color ones, you can sort them by color. Or if you just have regular goldfish crackers, you can just put make it a counting graph and then laminate them and then they can eat their, eat their snack. Um, <clears throat> these are a freebie on my blog. So www.pocketofpreschool.com, search pets and you will see it. Um, this is a fun I Spy game, it's just with shapes. And again, I color coded my cards, which all, all that means is I color copied each game on each one. That way, if they all get mixed together, I don't know, I don't have to sort it out. I can just, the kids can sort it out by color, so it's awesome. Um, so yeah, so they just put a little counter or a dog bone would be really cute on this game. They can put a dog bone all over the over the shape and then it's a fun ice spy game. You can also play just traditional go fish. So get out whatever cards you have. These are like a, um, a commercial set of go fish cards. You can also teach your kiddos how to play go fish um, for a pet theme because you know, fish are pets. Um, here's some more um, amazing dog bones. So I have this giant little tub and I have Itty bitty ones, I have colored ones, I have big ones. So we use these for, we weigh these, we compare them, we measure with them. And then you can either go to the dollar store or um, grab these mats. You can use just a bowl and you can pretend it's a dog bowl. They roll the dice, one, two, three, four. And then they count out one, two, three, four. And then they put them in their bowl and then they can see who gets the, fills their bowl up the fastest. My kids are really into racing right now. Um, if you have if you're working on addition, use two dice, and it's really fun to play that way too. But these dog bones, I mean, who wouldn't want, want to play? You can sort these, you can measure with them, you can weigh them, so, so many things. I have my pet stew out, which this is in my stew pack. So basically they grab the card, they count out the number of items, put it in the dog bowl, and mix it up. And it's really, really fun. I love, they're loving this counting stew. I had kiddos that just saw it today and they got over here and they played with it. And these, these dog bowls are from the dollar store. So how cute are those for the stews or just for like math? It would be really fun. Um, so I know some, I saw somebody said they have a pet bunny. Um, so this is actually one of my new science centers. 
or my new science unit. Um, Jessica, I do. Some of my dog bones I've had for like five, six years. And I just put a lid on it to make sure no little animals get in it. <laughs> you know, or like bugs or anything. Yeah, so I just put it in a plastic container and I use them from year to year so I don't have to um, keep reusing them. So this is the new fish um, science unit. And we have our little, our little fish. He's in here somewhere. He likes to hide. There he is. See him? There he is. Look at that guy. Oh, he's looking right at you guys. <laughs> so um, it, it includes some fish rules. Um, you can actually, um, with your kiddos, we actually got this fish last year, so some of my kids remembered him. Um, so that's the shopping list we made last year. They, I literally said, we need to get a fish. Let's research what to get. And we read a fish book, and we looked at aquariums, and we figured out what we needed. And then I went to the pet store, and they helped me set up the cage and everything, um, which was really awesome. And then I have these fish observation challenges. That way they're ob ob observing with a purpose. They're not just randomly looking. So like this one's like observe the parts of the aquarium, observe the parts of the fish, observe how the fish moves. And this little easel is just one of those from like Target. But these are, um, this little easel is great for like science or STEM challenges. Um, yeah, and then we have a fish, not a fish sort. Um, so yeah, and then I have a magnifying glass out and discovery pages and vocabulary cards so they can look at them closely. So yeah, super, super fun. <coughs> Let me show you blocks. Okay, so this is a freebie on TBT. So go to my TBT store and you can grab all of these STEM blocks center or STEM bin challenges. Um, Susan, I Susan's asking where I found the dog bones. Just go to like Target, you can go anywhere, Target, Walmart, and just grab different sizes. One will say like mini, one says like for small dogs. Um, oh, I'm really shaky, sorry guys. Um, so yeah, just grab all the different sizes. And they're pretty cheap too, because you can get like the off brand, you don't have to get the good kind because nobody's eating them. <laughs> um, so yeah, so these are free in my TPT store and you can print them off big or small, it's up to you. Um, and they are clip art, they're not real photos, but they are great because they get kids building all of these different things. Yes, Gina, I did find that red easel in the dollar spot. They usually have them out when they're like during like the, when they have all their school stuff sometimes. Um, so this is just some animals I have. Some like some of these are from the dollar store, like the snakes. Um, the cats and dogs actually bought off Amazon. If you want to grab those, those are linked in my Amazon store. So for mice, I just got some of those catnip toys. And these are, but how real do those look? So if mice freak you out, these might not be good for you. But they love making little mice houses with these. They're so cute. Because I couldn't find mice, so I just got some little cat toys. And then I have some books about pets that they can use as a reference. And then I have river rocks from the dollar store, tree logs. And then I just pulled some leaves off of some fake flowers from the dollar store. So that way they can um, build. And I do have the foam boards. So they can pretend those are grass or water. Here's one a little guy made today. And I'll see if I can get all the way down here to you. There's two little dogs inside. You guys see it? <laughs> so he has his blocks on the bottom. This is a pretty good little design my pre-K friend did. And he has his two dogs. And then he has a roof, which is just the cardboard. And then the leaves on top. And the sign, of course. You know, king of the castle. Ooh, yeah. So, so somebody just said... Um, he left it up, so he wanted to show you guys. They know I do videos sometimes. Like, do you want me to leave this up for your video? I was like, yes, please. Um, so Lori said, um, use the do large dog bones for doggy doggy. Where's your bone? Bone, which is a really fun. Um, what is that? A fun music and movement song. So here is our pretend pet store. And I know you're thinking, like, oh gosh, I don't have all this stuff. This one, if you have the animals, it's really not that bad. Let me see if I can back it up. Sorry guys. So here it is. And all the printables are in, again, my TPT store. So on one side, we have all of the animals. Slowly show you guys. Um, so I, I have, these are like those Beanie Babies from like McDonald's. Um, you can, you know, grab some from the store or like Target, not Target, <clears throat> the dollar store. So when you get a fish at a real store, you put it in a bag. So my little um, friend one year decided that we needed um, water bags. So she cut up 
blue paper, put it in a baggie so that way they can fish him out and give the customer the fish in a bag of water so he doesn't die. Like how, how smart was she? Like so smart knowing that fish need to be in water when the customer buys them. So make your own little bags of water. Um, my, all my friends today um, for our dismissal activity, they got to pick a piece of color paper and they just cut paper strips, which is a great fine motor activity. And now we have like bedding. These are just little plastic dishes. These I just painted blue on the inside. So that way one is for water and one is for food because animals need food and water. You can also use little plastic animals if you don't have the Beanie Babies. I just slowly collected them over the years from McDonald's, a lot of them. Like some of these are from the dollar store. A little friend today said they need a collar, so she told me to put ribbon on them. So that way they can, um, you know, have a leash. And then baskets, look at this shopping list she made for her, her little kitty cat. So this was during play. I did not tell her to do this. She did it all by herself. Look at that, playing and out, all that play. Very, very awesome. And then I have some pet treats. So to sneak in some mats, I just have different pet treats. So we made them for Model Magic one year and I just keep them. And then I just have some pom-poms. These are just pipe cleaners, just kind of balled up. And then they have to sort them by color. And then this is just a, a tray that I think my trucks came in, like a Melissa and Doug set. And then I put a scale, so now they can weigh them and they can pick them out. Here, let's do this a little bit. So they can pick out the ones they want and they can weigh them just like they do. If you go to Petco, a lot, like there's a scale there and then they just put them in a little bag. So now you have fine motor, you have color sorting for math and you have weight. So again, more measurement and more math. <coughs> and then I made almost all of my um, pet food jars. So I just took empty bottles. I had, these are yogurt containers. I just covered with tape. Um, but just little different bottles I had and put, labeled them with it with the pet. That way if they buy a spider or a fish, they need to make sure they get the fish food for it. Um, so those, and we, uh, somehow my mouth suit got lost saying to make some more. You can also just put it on a paper bag. It does not have to be fancy because all they care is that there's dog food. They don't really care if, you know, it's like fancy. It doesn't have to be these boxes. These are actually the boxes I bought. These are all the different sizes for the, that are in that manipulative box. So I had the minis, puppy, and then the milk bone flavored snacks. So, and then I just put the boxes in the pretend. And then some cages I had extra, some plants. Um, we, they have gravel, so I just put some gravel in a baggie, and if you're worried your kids would open it, just tape it shut, no worries, and rocks. And then for pet beds, I have small pet beds and big pet beds, and it's just feathers in a baggie, super simple. Um, bowls, small and large. Um, the leashes are from the dollar store. And then I just have some paper bags that are different sizes. That way when they, the customer comes up, they, if they have a lot of stuff, they'll know to get a big bag. So they're um, estimating the amount of objects and the amount of, or the size bag they would need um, based on how many they have. So that's more math. There's also an inventory list so they can count how many pets um, there are, or maybe this looks like this one. Um, she, instead of drawing, her numbers she drew that there were three and then I have some price tags so that way I have some with numbers some without so there's just a dry erase marker in here and some tape and they can put prices on things so that is our pet store oh and then the banner and those pictures on the back they're um they're like from a calendar and I just laminated them and kept them oh one more thing so it's also fun to have, I know a lot of you guys do this, but just grab an ad while you're at the pet store and then just laminate it. Um, the pack also comes with some in it as well, so that way you have both. But just sneaking in more of that um, environmental print. So there it is. All right, so I'm going to turn it around, see if you guys have any questions. The coat rack, somebody asked this coat rack. This coat rack is from Ikea. Um, so where my white shelves are Ikea. Um, that's Melissa and Doug, the checkout stand. I just take the awning off because it's kind of annoying. I can't 
see and talk to the kids. So sometimes I just take the awning off. But I do like the sticks on the side to um, to hang things, like the open, the open and close sign and the inventory list. And then this little table is a lack side table from Ikea, and I wanna say it's like less than $10. So yeah, I love these because I also, um, if you need it to be bigger, this one doesn't have it on it, but you can Velcro that, put some Velcro on it, like right here, and then you can stick two together and they won't wiggle, so it's awesome. So yeah, so that is all of the pet stuff. Again, if you wanna grab all the principles, they're in my TBT store, the link is at the top. It's in my Pet Math and Literacy Centers pack. I'm gonna flip it around if you guys have any questions for me. So I haven't seen any many questions. I see, have seen you guys helping each other out, answering each other's questions, so that's awesome. Thank you guys so much for you know helping each other out. So if you guys wanna keep talking or if you have more questions that, or maybe you think of one like tomorrow or something, hop over to the Pocket of Preschool Facebook group and all those teachers will be happy to help you guys over there and then I will pop in and help you as well. And yeah. So you guys have a great night. Thank you so much for all your um, comments and likes and shares and things. So yeah. All right, well you guys have a great night and I will talk to you next week. See you soon.